guys, welcome back to my channel. Merry Christmas Eve, that's when I'm filming this. I wanted to show you all my sweater really quick because I'm in the Christmas mood. I think it's so cute. So today I wanted to talk about oral boards and everything that goes into that and what to expect as an EMT student. And I'm gonna go over how mine went. Let's get started. I have my notes that I wrote down from that day. So I started my EMT program on August 12th. And I have a whole video of what to expect whenever you're an EMT student. And I have a whole timeline that goes into that, so make sure to go check that out. I finished my final exam, and then you take your oral boards. And there's a ton of paperwork that you have to send in beforehand, but then you schedule a date for your oral boards. And usually it's in person, except now because of COVID, it was just like, over Zoom or over FaceTime, and you have to be in full gear. So your EMT polo, EMT pants, the boots, the works, you gotta have it all. I spent like $250 for the whole dang outfit, but hopefully it'll be worth it. So I took my oral boards, and to prepare for this, I basically went over a bunch of patient scenarios. I had my girlfriend read whatever the instructor would be reading and obviously I would be responding. Now I have two videos on patient assessment and if you have not seen them, you should go check them out. But I basically explain anything that goes into breaking down each section of the patient assessment and have acronyms that go along with that. So I jot all of those down beforehand and then I say, I'm ready. And then she went ahead and told me my scenario for the day. Now obviously I was very nervous and I prepared as much as I could. I tried to get my hands on as many scenarios as possible I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a medical or trauma one, but I got a, um, a medical one and I tried to practice as much as I could. And at the end of the day, I knew what I knew and it was ready for showtime. I sat there, I forgot what day it was, but it was a couple weeks ago. And of course there was a bunch of, we had a bunch of technical problems, but the instructor was super nice. I think I wrote down her name. Oh, her name was Katie and she was the biggest sweetheart. I mean. Immediately when the video went on, she just had this huge smile on her face and it put me at ease immediately and I felt confident and she made me feel, you know, like I got this. So she explained to me my scenario and I, I'm looking down because I wrote down my notes, but basically it was a 72 year old male who complained of or who has generalized weakness and confusion. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this could literally be anything in the world. Am I prepared enough? You know, I have a thousand million thoughts going through my head of what if I fail? Because basically it's a pass fail. It's 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes to complete your patient assessment, go through everything. And if you fail, you have one more try. And if you fail that, then you're out of the program. So I was like, I need to pass on the first time so that I don't have an anxiety attack and die. So 72 year old male, generalized weakness, confusion, and his daughter is there to answer any OPQRST or sample questions. And how I thought it was gonna go, or the way that she set it up was not what I thought was gonna happen. So she was basically like, okay, so you're gonna explain to me everything that you do from the moment that you step into the ambulance on the way there. So I was like, oh my goodness, oh, I haven't practiced this. So basically I was like, okay, um, so we go in the ambulance and we're on our way there and we put our necessary PPE on. I was like, we wear gloves and a mask because of COVID, but that's about it. <laughs> like I was very unsure, but she was very reassuring. So that definitely helped. Then I was like, well, then I would go up to the house. I would introduce myself. And then I said, hi, I'm Jessica and I am an EMT. Can you take me to the patient? And she takes me to the back of the room. And that's when I started my patient assessment. So of course I said BSI, is the scene safe, nature of illness, number of patients, all of that. And basically he was just lying down. He was a and times four. Chief complaint was altered mental status. His airway was patent. His respiratory rate was 28. And I made sure to ask for the quality and rhythm. That is a comment that she made at the end that a lot of students forget to ask. They usually just go, hey, can I get the pulse? Or hey, can I have the respiratory rate? And then they didn't ask for the quality and rhythm. And I don't know if they dock points for that or if they fail you. Like, I don't know what the cutoff is. If you can not say so many things, I don't know when they fail you. So I tried to remember everything and give all of the knowledge that I have. So respiratory rate was 28 deep and rapid. I was like, cool. Awesome, okay, 
and then circulatory or circulation pulse was 110 strong and regular and skin condition he was flushed warm and dry at this point I have no idea what is going on with this patient but I acted confident as if I knew exactly what was going on because generalized weakness and confusion what does that tell you nothing so I said this is a priority uh, but this is a priority patient and we're gonna go ahead and transport so go on to OPQRSTO what was he doing beforehand lying around does anything make it better or worse I just wrote down worse I don't think anything makes it better or worse um, he just feels unwell and then radiation so does the pain move anywhere and he said overall like the whole body just feels malaise just feels you know not right and he keeps urinating so he's peeing all the time so I was like okay that's a clue still have no idea what's going on but that's a clue and then he has no pain but he has a 7 out of 10 of feeling bad and then how long ago did this happen he's been feeling this way the whole week sorry I don't mean to be looking down so much maybe I can bring the paper up okay moving on to snack he just felt weak he doesn't have any known allergies okay so his medication that he took was glucophage, lisinopril, and aspirin. It's okay if you don't know what they're for. I wrote down all of the medication and then I said, what do you take the glucophage for? And what do you take lisinopril for? And they, and that's okay, you can say that in real life too if you don't know. And then we moved on to pertinent past history. And he has diabetes and he has high blood pressure. And he also has a history or had a surgery where he had bypass last time he ate or drank something was water and soup yesterday so I was like this isn't really signs of hypoglycemia because although he ate yesterday you know he's not really that out of it you know he has generalized weakness from all of the scenarios that I had gone through before it didn't really match up to the same symptoms that these other patients had in my patient scenarios and then events le leading up to this he was lying around then it was time for my second assessment and I was like, okay, hey, this person that my patient obviously has diabetes, I need to get his blood pressure. And his blood pressure was six blood pressure. I need to get his blood glucose, his blood sugar. And his blood sugar was 600. So I was like, oh my goodness, this man needs some insulin quick. And I also checked like neurological, I checked for pearl, pupils equal and not reactive to light. And then it was time for vitals. So at this point, I knew what was going on with him, but I just could not for the life of me remember what the heck, what he has is called. But I tried my best. So vitals were 140 over 90. His pulse was 110 regular. His respiratory rate was 28 deep and rapid. And his oxygen saturation was 98%. I'm pretty sure I put O2 on him, so on a non-rebreather. Then it was time for my field impression, and I was like, if I screw this up, I'm a fail. But I had previously learned about the different types of diabetes when they have really high blood sugar. And one of them is for diabetes type one, and the other one is for diabetes type two. And I was racking my brain, and this is all within a matter of seconds. I was racking my brain, like, which one is it? Oh my goodness. And so I was like, field impression is that this patient is having some type of diabetic emergency. I believe he's having, and I was like, hypersomolar hemininocytal syndrome. She's like, yes, that one. And I was like, great, I knew somewhat of it. But basically it's called HHNS or HHNKS, hyperglycemic hypersmolar non-ketotic syndrome. I knew I had read about it whenever I was studying it. I knew I had gone over it with my patient assessments. I just couldn't for the life of me remember. So that one, oh actually, before I got, I did his field impression, during the vitals, I still didn't know what type of diabetes he had. So I went back and that's okay, you can do that. I was like, I want to ask the patient what type of diabetes he has. And he had diabetes type two. And then later, after I was done, she said, even though I didn't have all the information in the moment, I was able to guide the conversation correctly to go back and get more information or ask follow-up questions to get the right diagnosis for me or not necessarily diagnosis or what possibly could be going on so I know how to treat the patient. So type 1 would have been diabetic ketoacidosis and type 2 would have been the HHNKS. 
my field impression was that. It said my intervention, and at this point I'm freaking out as well. Because what can I possibly give the patient? Because she prefaced the scenario saying that I am on an ambulance with two other EMT partners who have the same level of education that I have. Basically saying they can only do the number of things that I can do as an EMT basic. There is no paramedic on board, on board, on the ambulance. And so I was like, well, reassess him every five minutes, make sure he doesn't decline too much and try to get to the hospital ASAP. And then she asked me more questions. She said, okay, imagine you had a paramedic on board. What do you think that this paramedic could do to help the patient? And I was like, I have no, I am not a paramedic. Why does this lady think I would know? And so I'm just, I'm, I'm going through all the possibilities. I mean, he would give the patient insulin? And she was like, I don't know if you know this, but EMTs nor paramedics are allowed to give patients insulin. That's something they get at the hospital. And I was like, cool. I have no idea. And I said that. I said, I don't know what the paramedic would give him. And she said that they would give him an IV dilution. So they would just give the patient an IV because of his dehydration. So before I mentioned that he was urinating a lot and that the last time that he ate something was soup the other day. So I was like, okay, that is great to know. And then she said, okay, now the patient is at the hospital. And what do you think that the doctors or the PA or the staff would give this patient to help him get better. Of course, I freaked out again because, you know, you just have to trust your gut. You know all the information. I'm like, oh no, I don't know what they could give him. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know all of my drugs. I don't know anything. Everything is falling out of my ears. And then I thought about it. I was like, well, his blood sugar is too high. So obviously he just needs insulin. Could it really be that easy? So I was like, they would give him insulin to get that blood sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells and she was like yes great job i mean she was like one of those moms on the soccer field that every time you kick the ball they're like whoa so that made me feel good that you know i i in the moment i felt stupid i was like i should know this but she was like absolutely yes insulin great job and that was the end of it she said that i did you know fantastic just kidding um but she kind of like made me feel proud, you know, and it was almost like she was a proud mama, even though we had just met. I didn't know anything about this lady. She was so positive and so kind, and there's no way she would ever watch this, but Katie, if you're watching this, you are awesome. <laughs> and that's how my oral boards went. Let's see if I have any other notes about it. But again, you have 15 minutes. I think I finished within 15 minutes. And I passed and she was like, email your instructor and then it's time for your clinical rotations. And it was exciting and I was glad that I did it. That was my oral board story. And there's not a lot of scenarios out there, but I tried to find what I could and I got someone to help me. That is how my oral boards went. And I hope that that helped you kind of gauge what to expect if you're in the same program as I am, or I wonder how similar it is if you're in a different program, but it's not as scary as it seems. Of course, hindsight is 2020. That is all that I have for y'all today. And I hope that y'all have a wonderful Christmas if that's what you celebrate or you had a wonderful Hanukkah if that's what you celebrate. But I want everyone to have a happy and safe holiday. I wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful new year. If I don't see you until then, wonderful holidays. And I want to thank y'all so much for watching my videos and for following me on this journey. Please make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps out my channel and helps out my, my growth on this platform. If you have any other video requests or any questions at all, please comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to respond anytime that I can. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see y'all next time.